Hello all, uh, welcome to this IBM CJ Google Hangout. Uh, the campaigning is over for the Delhi elections and it's going to be a much watched uh, uh, polling this time because um, it's a triangle, perhaps a lot of love, but um, it's, uh, it's a triangle of a lot of political tussle because there is this third element, this third party that is joining the scheme of things. How has that impacted uh, the voter, will, uh, is the voter going to decide now um, for the alternatives, for perhaps um, uh, 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 an, op uh, an option uh, between all the corruption, all the vices that have been uh, in the last so many years. We have with us a very interesting panel. We've got Ankur Garg um, from I for India. We've got Prasoon Gupta from Mera Court. We've got Manoj uh, Kumar from My Neta, and Saurabh also, he's uh, Prasoon's uh, colleague. He's also from Mera uh, Vote. Dot in. Now, these are all um, websites, these are all online initiatives that these guys have launched uh, just to help us, the voter, decide uh, better. We, we go into the polling uh, stations uh, with a clearer view. We know our candidate, we know his history, we know what his plans are for the future. Now, I just want you guys, hi, thanks very much for joining us. We just want all of you to um, introduce yourselves a little bit, just talk about very briefly the website that you have started and what that aims to do in terms of helping the voter. I'll start with you, Ankur. You've also been a citizen journalist with us. Um, so we have your story on ibncj.com. But uh, talk a little bit about the website. Sure. Thanks, Mega. Hey, hi, everyone. This is Ankur. And I have founded an organization called as i for india along with my co-founder, Tarun Jain. Uh, i for india to give you a brief description, is an online platform which lets citizens rate the performance of the elected representatives on various parameters. Okay. So a lot of you have got a lot of report cards while you were at school or colleges, you know, you know, to evaluate your performances. If you're working in a company, you, you have a lot of metrics and dashboard on which your annual performance is actually, you know, measured and evaluated, which kinds of decides how much salary hike or bonus should you be getting hmm. but you know uh, Tarun and I figured out that we have we have these elected representatives who worry about no other result but the voting results only after five years but unfortunately five years is, five years is too long a time to be able to give a mandate or decide something we really need something which is more of an ongoing accountability over a period of time between these five years so we built this platform, uh, I for India, it's on a website called as www.ifor.org, I repeat, iforindia.org, where you can go uh, register using your mobile number and you know uh, really pick your constituency from the state and the district and really uh, rate on a scale of 1 to 5 your satisfaction with various parameters, uh, you know, which would, which would in turn build a report card for your chief minister, for your MLA, as well as your MP. So, so Ankur, what, you're say, what you're saying, Ankur, is that it's your website is probably not just um, uh, apps around this uh, time of the year where you're going to vote, but it's also mm -hmm. going to be evaluating and assessing the work of the politician, your local MLA, your chief minister, even during the course of, his, um, of him being in power, right? Exactly. That's the idea. We want to. We wanted to try and disconnect all the buzz, uh, you know, only during the election, but instead try and build Focus some kind of work. accountability over right. over the block of two elections as well. Yes. Right. Accountability, I think, is the key. Prasoon, talk us about. Talk to us about your website, miravote.in. So, uh, I'll give you a brief background about how Miravote was started. So you know, uh, every time when we see this uh, tussle between the politicians and the uh, citizens across the country happening on the roads, mm -hmm. so this happened around two years back when Anna Zari sat at uh, Ramila Madan for the Jal Lopal bill. Then it happened last year end when we witnessed a very heinous crime uh, with a with a girl, a very young girl, mm -hmm. and when the people wanted strict laws for women's security to be implemented in our country. But as Ankur mentioned, that every time when this happens. We have to wait for the next five years, for the next election to happen, to actually give our mandate to the political parties. Correct. Generally, what happens in the parliament okay. is, the political parties endorse the agendas that are important for them 
to actually get the votes finally so generally the agendas like food security bill land acquisition bill and the agendas which are actually included within the manifesto of the political party are discussed and sponsored by the political parties for discussion within the parliament but if you actually go and look at the sessions uh, things like jan lokpal women security bill these are mm -hmm. actually discussed for a day or two just under uh, public pressure but they are not sponsored exclusively by any political party within the parliament so once we discuss them uh, they, the people actually forget about it and even the political parties forget about it during their term of uh, okay. uh, governance okay so what so is the website we want to so the website does is website actually brings to the people a very important tool called manifesto so on our website the public can actually go and view the manifestos of various political parties uh, you know we have categorized the manifesto under different heads like education uh, social reforms and different sectors which are relevant to the public hmm. the people can compare the manifestos so let's say i can compare the education policies of bjp with congress okay. or aam aadmi party okay. and then i can decide whom i have to vote based on the promises if i see that there is a uh, there is an agenda that is not present in any political party's manifesto i can go and propose that agenda under the citizens manifesto which will be put up on the website once it is charted and given to the political parties to be considered upon but the political uh, manifestos are out already i mean so does this still hold any value now yeah so that's right so for this time as far as the assembly elections are concerned the manifestos are out and obviously they have prepared the manifesto so we would just take these manifesto as of now to the people and we'll make the political parties accountable to them once they are actually once they come to the power so let's say once we get the election result on the 8th of december we'll mm -hmm. actually create a report card around the politi uh, election manifesto for the political party in the next 5 years great, and when great. the lok sabha elections are approaching great, great. Great, uh, Prasun. That was interesting. Now I want to come to Manoj now. Uh, Manoj, what is it that you're doing on my Neeta? I, uh, I also I also know that they've got a very interesting uh, uh, application that you can just SMS a number, get uh, feedback. Uh, talk to us about that. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Manoj. Uh, uh, I'm a research fellow at Association for Democratic Reforms, also known as EPR. And I will begin with a small clarification that. Uh, myneta.info is uh, is not a work of mine but i work for an organization which is doing this fantastic work for last almost 15 years now yes. in the in the domain of uh, electoral and political reforms and uh, myneta.info is a website which contains the coverage that adr has done for last 10 years since this system of uh, self uh declaration of uh, criminal cases and uh, financial assets and education and all this uh, data started uh, where uh, hmm. supreme judgment used the system and asked the election commission that every candidate who is contesting the election will have to uh, declare in a self testing uh, in a in a self sworn affidavit that what are the criminal cases the candidate is facing how much hmm. is the asset financial asset that he has and what are his or her uh, education qualification and what actually is his profession so these so uh, uh, we at adr have been collecting this data for the last 10 years and, and have covered absolutely every election every single candidate who, have, who has ever contested uh, an assembly or a lok sabha election and in few cases also the uh, local uh, municipal elections so right. this is what manida.info essentially contains we also have a website uh, called adrindia.org which all which contains uh, uh, reports based on topical issues uh, again based on the data that we collected from these affidavits okay. and uh, and uh, just to read about adr uh, association for democratic reform was started by a group of uh, professors from im amdavad in 1998 when they went to supreme court Uh, with this petition that every uh, every candidate should declare uh, what actually uh, the criminal case is he, uh, he is facing and what are his assets so this is mm -hmm. really about uh, our organization and uh, myneta.info in specific right uh, now tell me uh, i think for a lot of uh, voters this time the interesting aspect of the elections is uh, the the third 
uh, important party, uh, the Aam Admi Party. Uh, do you think, uh, I mean, you guys, uh, th there are people who are logging onto your website, leaving remarks, leaving what they think. Uh, what is the kind of sense that you get that um, is, is Aam Admi Party giving the jitters to the other two, uh, you know, the, the competitive, other two comp competitions, the Congress and the BJP? Do you think that these parties have something to fear from the Aam Admi Party? Uh, this is about me. Uh, uh, any of you, any one of you can start. All right. So uh, I'm sorry, I cannot comment on this question because uh, uh, we, we, as an objective, maintain an arm distance from uh, reflecting any sort of partisan view. I actually do not qualify for this question. Okay, so, uh, Prasun, I see you uh, smiling over there. So do you want to take that question? Yeah, so Mega, you know, yeah. uh, there are certain very interesting things that uh, Aam Aadmi Party has actually bring into this arena of political war. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they have put up st spy cameras across all yes. these jugies. Yes. So obviously, a lot of interesting things are being taught uh, to the other political parties by Aam Aadmi Party. Mm -hmm. As far as the uh, scene of the political election is concerned, I think uh, the people really know what needs to be voted for. And, uh, you know, uh, Aam Aadmi Party are, along with Arvind Kejriwal, they have done a very good work. So I hope that they go, win good number of seats. Uh, I'm not sure whether the government will be formed by BJP or AAP or Congress. But mm. I think this is a very interesting election and this is something that India was looking for this election. Yes, yes, election. yes. And yes, another yes. important point I would like to add, uh, yes, that sir. in a democracy, every political party has a duty to inform his, the citizens about how the things are working and bring about facts to the citizens so that they can make an informed choice. Mm -hmm. And I think Aam Aadmi Party has tried to do that. They have been trying to explain things. They have tried to be more transparent in their dealings, in their donations or whatever, which other parties have been lacking and have not been doing their duties, I think. So that... Okay. 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 Uh, this is, this is Ankur. Yeah, uh, see, I would I would like to add something about my analysis about the Delhi Assembly election so far. So mm. I think uh, this is the first election that I believe is so super confused that there's no <laughs> way for any okay. for anyone to be able to predict which way it's gonna go. Uh, you know, specifically around Aam Aadmi Party, when the whole election bus started, everyone was like, Aam Aadmi Party is gonna go, gonna be a spoiler. Uh, it probably would, you know, just just end up cutting a vote either for BJP or Congress. But I believe at this point of time, uh, you know, the the progress that they have made, I would I would stay away from commenting whether good or bad. But at least the kind of buzz and the uh, you know uh, uh, all, all all the you know followers that they have been able to build it seems like they're no more uh, spoiler but actually a very viable uh, you know third option for a lot of people Options. who are going to move in 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 delhi so which is which is, which is, which is good actually but i just hope that is it does not uh, lead to the same age old coalition problem where we again get into a you know a, a mandated fracture and again people are really uh, you know uh, forced to you know take a government which is not able to take a decision uh, as as quickly as they would want. Hmm. But uh, 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 Ankur, I mean at least your website there is uh, you have this thing of uh, where people can leave their feedback. You and you're creating a report card for MLAs who standing for election have been in power. Uh, I mean you know the pulse of the voter. So right. To speak. So, so to yeah. speak, so I'm saying that uh, do these things, you know, like the sting on the Ahmadli party where Shazia mm -hmm. Ali, you know, you can see her kind of negotiating a deal over there. Um, or, for example, the video that AAP released today of uh, alcohol being, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. distributed. Do you think mm -hmm. things like this make a difference for the voter or have they already decided who they're going to vote for? No, see, I, I would like to categorize voters in two different categories. One of one, one category is hardcore supporters, which every political party do have on their own. So these kind of operations, staying or news articles and stuff definitely don't impact those kind of followers. But okay. you know, there's another category which is basically the fence sitters, people sitting on the wall deciding which way do they want to swing, and you know which is which is the right party for them. So they definitely do get affected with these kind of things. Where uh, you know, there's a lot, these are a lot of people who would not really go into a lot of details, but instead what they hear over you know through media or over news articles or from people, their friends and family, they would really like to believe that on the face value and then decide accordingly. 
and you know uh, uh, you know in, in elections like in delhi which is which is such a close elections a lot of you know having a lot of people uh, sitting on the fence can really uh, swing the results one way or the other that's true uh, can that's i can i come in sure yes sir so uh, i would like to uh, introduce uh, something called that we uh, a mobile application that we launched during karnataka elections mm -hmm. uh, goes by the name of election box reporter ewr it's a fully available uh, android based application and uh, the prime purpose of this application is to capture the electoral violations since we're talking about distribution of liquor and that sort of uh, bribing of voters and uh, yeah. corrupt practices during elections by the candidates and the political parties we launched this uh, mobile based application to capture those electoral violations so a citizen can uh, a voter can install it on his phone and uh, he or she can capture a particular violation on the phone and can put to us and uh, we have we, we then report it to the we have this algorithm which basically direct, directs it uh, the evidence is directed to the server of election commission and mm -hmm. uh, the observer basically gets the information okay so, so this is uh, to capture that crowds uh, crowd information somebody wants to tell uh, somebody wants to inform election commission about this uh, various incidents uh, and also uh, to get information of who is popular and who is not we also run a uh, uh, lot of social media campaigns on uh, i was i was in fact coming to that uh, manoj i saw that uh, campaign that you have done it's a series of um, uh, i don't know videos where you've got uh, people like amir khan uh, telling people to come out and vote how important do you think guys is is the first time voter in this uh, election uh it's uh, uh, the idea of involving uh, uh, not only amir khan but also the very recently uh, we have involved uh, people from civil society like very famous journalists and anchors and uh, also uh, people who do uh, these famous reality shows like uh, highway on play uh, request individuals request voters to go and vote and not only vote but also go prepared uh, uh, after getting information about the candidates and about the political parties yeah so that culture of knowing that culture of informed choice mm. should should be should be prevailing and that is the only way forward that is how democracy become mature and this is the basic idea behind it. Great. So, so, so we, we, were, we were talking about uh, yes. we were talking about the people who are on the fence and who can really decide which way uh, the results could go. Uh, are we also looking at the first time voter, the college so, voter, 18 to 23 bracket, which is yeah. going to be perhaps the deciding factor this time? Yeah, yeah Mega. Right. From my experience at I for India and a lot of data that I am currently analyzing, uh, you know, based on the based on the feedback that I'm receiving on I for India. I think youth and specifically the first time voters would actually play a major role this time uh, specifically because of the fact that you know over a period of time a lot of the lot of these agitation debates and protests that we've seen are are really fueled through social media which is primarily like you know, the youth and the people you know uh, just graduating out of colleges and these are the people mm. who are demanding a lot more accountability they just don't want to be sitting at home and uh, you know uh, deal with whatever whatever shit is being thrown on them but instead they want to come out speak and really voice their opinion so i think with a lot of awareness that has been raised by multiple organizations with a lot of incidents that have happened either 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 over corruption or law and order that has happened over uh, last few months uh, you know mm -hmm. the, the youth and the first time voters is really frustrated they really want to come out and actually be able to voice their opinion. So I, I, I guess this this is an election where uh, first time voter and youth primarily can right. play a big role. Let me at this point get in a question that we've been asked on our uh, on on Twitter. Uh, people are asking if, if tech tools are going to change the election process this time. Websites like yours or uh, so many politicians using Twitter, Facebook uh, to to connect directly to the voter is that going to change the election process that's a question that has come to us via twitter yeah. see it, so is, make it, is, already, I have it is already changing let's, the election process okay let's get prasoon because he's been quiet a little while let's get prasoon first so, uh, so let me tell you, let me tell you uh, something about the youth voter 
there are around 12 crore first time voters this time out of around 79 crore eligible voters who will be voting in the lok sabha election okay. going with the delhi elections obviously this number would be proportionate to the lok sabha but then we can see high numbers of the youth going for the first time and casting their vote when we talk about youth you know what happens in a family if i am educated and if i have an opinion which i actually carry forward from anything happening on the social media then actually i can influence more than one vote in my family so okay. think about me as one educated person in my family mm. i can go and actually tell my servant my driver my my family people my parents that this is what is happening and this is what you should vote for so this single vote of an educated person who is present online has actually a ripple effect over a number of votes uh, within their family and across uh, around their surroundings so that is how it actually matters a lot okay okay um uh, um and we are also to uncle you wanted to talk about the the tech yeah. tools and how that's impact right so uh, you know uh, both both the questions are actually very related so i would say uh, you know the time has already come where the tech tools are already impacting the the whole election process and it's not that you know at some point of time it would be able to impact or not that the the you know the 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 impact is already happening and uh, uh the number of online initiatives that you are seeing is is actually an example of the same where you know i for india mera vote dot in adr and stuff like that are actually you know using technology very powerfully to be able to enable and educate people about a lot of stuff hmm. right um now um one of my questions to you just uh, just as an interesting aspect of uh, what the website what your initiative uh you you've uncovered you found uh, tell us how many criminal cases are there um uh, against uh, the mlas who are standing for elections this time in delhi yeah actually to be honest i believe manoj from adr would be the right person to take that answer take take that question yeah, yeah. because yeah, yeah. adr i ask i i put this to manoj uh yes sir so uh, first i would like to take the question regarding the whether whether uh, it tools or use of technology can change uh, can bring a change in the domain of uh, uh, electoral and political reforms mm -hmm. so i think change is a ideal scenario but uh, i think uh, but it is still it has started spreading certain layers and we can see that from the various feedbacks we are getting from all sorts of Uh, uh all sorts of corners from the uh, from the users who come to our uh, web resources web resources the kind of activity we have been uh, uh experiencing for quite some time in uh, maybe in last 6 months so definitely something is happening somewhere whether it would translate into change uh, it's for certain was a time period uh, i think uh, let's let us be very soon uh the the first signal of change from, came from uh, the congress party president when he said vice president when he said that uh, uh, the ordinance regarding the convicted and mlas should be withdrawn and it was done so i think mm. it, it's on the same curve now taking taking the question regarding the criminality in politics although uh, these assembly elections which are undergoing right now delhi is the last last uh, of the five elections uh, in the current round uh we expected that these five will after the uh, withdrawal of the uh, ordinance we expected there would be a tremendous shift yeah uh, in the stand of the political parties hmm. and uh, this time newer candidates would be tried who do not have these sort of criminal cases against them but hmm. there is absolutely no change in the trajectory uh, to, uh no, notably uh you know this person uh, from this family from kanada who was uh, who is uh, in jail facing cpi inquiry regarding the uh, murder of uh, one lady his brother was his his uh, wife was given ticket a, a, a sitting M, a minister in rajasthan uh, his wife uh, his brother given ticket so there is absolutely no change regarding that yeah what uh, i saw on the website on your website is that mm. there are there are some 129 mlas with criminal cases against them yeah 16% i also checked that yeah uh, yeah that's 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 just i 
amazing. You think that, I mean, if, if presented in this way, you know, when to get to know, and also it's very interesting fact that, you know, uh, some of the, a lot of the candidates, uh, they're either illiterate, they're either eighth pass or uh, perhaps a few 12th pass. They're, you know, the, the level of education, uh, you know, is, is very low, the criminal cases against them, the property and the assets against to the names, you know, how it's been compiled, it's very interesting. Do you think if this is this all this information presented to the voter, that is going to make a difference in how you view uh, these people who are you who you're voting for? Saurabh, what do you have to say to that, Saurabh? Yeah, I, I think uh, it should make an impact. Uh, though, uh, means this has been done by election commission since 2002, I think, after the Supreme Court order. But we have not seen such a trend that voters have really taken this in cognizance while voting. So I think there is a disconnect of information that this information is not really reaching the voters. So initiatives by ADR or Mera Vote or hmm. so these initiatives will make it helpful to really make uh, make it easy for the voters to get this information because one can't go and check all the affidavits of the uh, representatives and call out the facts. So I Correct. think these kind of reports, if made in a more presentable form and make more interesting form, then so, I think it will have an impact in the long term. So Mega, on Saurabh's point, what we have done at i for india is uh, we have already partnered with PRS India to start populating a lot of their data through our report card. So if you actually go to any of the MP report card, the data that PRS consolidated in terms of attendance records, number of questions asked, debates participated in the parliament, we actually show that in a very objective way, very easily searchable. We are also discussing mm -hmm. with ADR and at some point of time we would want to start disseminating the ADR information through the report cards as well. You know, the okay. website is very user friendly so we think it will be easier for someone to be able to discover this information. And one mm -hmm. more point I would like to add that uh, the re recent Supreme Court judgment that uh, the convicted criminals would be disqualified. So I think that will also have a major impact on these statistics in the coming future because this has opened the issue in the wide debate because it was widely quoted in the newspapers and people got to know that what's happening. Right. So, uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, information given to the voter also changes made in the whole system. For example, uh, the introduction of none of the above option where, uh, you know, you're kind of pressurizing the party to put their best candidate forward. Um, and an and, and information, a platform where the voter can get information like this. I think the importance, you know, we've all been pressing, everybody is pressing on the fact that how it's important for the voter to go out and vote. But added to that, it's also important to make an informed decision for the, for the voter to be educated about Canada. And that's where I think you guys come in. How important do you think is, is the role that apps, like websites like yours, apps that are easily available. How do you think, how, how important um, are these things in, in the present time? So, uh, oh, sure. uh, taking further uh, from the previous discussion that we were having about the criminal cases against the M MLAs, talking in perspective of the present mm -hmm. question that you're talking about, that how does it lead to the, I mean, how does education, educating the voter lead to the reforms? Uh, let's say this okay. time there are uh, 50, criminal ca uh, 50 criminals out of 100 uh, sitting M MLAs in the parliament for, for the next time when they're actually fighting the election. So a lot of these criminal cases are actually have not reached the level of conviction. So when you are in politics, what happens is a lot of false criminal cases are also filed against you. So there are a lot of politicians who may be clean, but since the judicial process has uh, taken a lot of time to actually reach a conclusion whether to convict them or not, a lot of cases are still pending. So judicial reforms has been a very important uh, reform that is pending in the parliament. So when the politicians will realize the importance of something like judicial reforms, as it is also affecting their political future, I think this kind of issue will be taken up in the parliament as soon as possible. So, you know, educating the voter has created a pressure on the political parties to reduce the number of criminal cases. And right. the way to reduce the number of criminal cases would be to uh, conclude the proceedings against them within the judicial uh, courts. Right, right. Um, now, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wrap up with this one final question. I'm gonna put it to all of you. Uh, what, it, what do you think are the three, or let's say two, let's let's keep it to two, two most important issues that bother the voter that they're going to base their choice upon. 
Ankur, I'm coming to you first. Yeah, so I would I would like to speak based on the data that we are receiving for both All India as well as Delhi. Inflation or the price rise is the most pressing issue across all uh, you know all segment of voters. The second one, uh, uh, you know, across India, it's unemployment, whereas in Delhi, it's more around law and order, which is actually a bigger issue. Right, law and order, of course. Uh, Manoj. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I would like to uh, begin with uh, one, one introduction to our recent application, which we, uh, I'm sorry, I'm deviating a bit from the discussion, but one small mention I would like to give, that very recently with collaboration uh, with Facebook, uh, we have mm -hmm. introduced this USSD based uh, application, where you have to dial in star 325, star 35 hash, uh, and you can get the can information of your NETA, of your candidate, of your MP, MLA, the, uh, the criminal records, the, uh, the financial assets, the education, uh, all the information. For yeah, I saw that. It's, it's, it's very interesting because on the go, and it's, it's uh, the point uh, person. I mean, you don't have to go through the entire website and go it's through it's every other yeah. MLA. Just for that. It's for free. You don't, have to, you don't need internet. You don't need uh, uh, a smartphone. Right. Your basic picture phone is available. So I would request everybody to at least try this and also spread the word uh, that on, on your respective portal. Hmm. And now coming back to the issues that a voter faces, uh, I would concur with the uh, with that the issues right now absolutely are the uh, inflation followed by the corruption cases and also very casually the criminality in politics is also becoming an issue and we have seen incidences regarding that in all five uh, these assembly elections. Right. Prasun. Uh, so actually you know Delhi has a very uh, interesting number because there are a lot of youth voters in Delhi who are cosmopolitan hmm. and uh, so as Ankur said I think uh, price rise and inflation matters a lot to the Delhi people because it is impacting their livelihood, their everyday, everyday life, yeah. not met. And obviously security. So, you know, Delhi has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, bold women crowd who can come forward and talk about their security. So that has happened in the past one year. And I think a lot of people are concerned about the security of their daughters, their sisters, and the people in their family. So that is, again, a very important issue which Ankur mentioned. And I think these are going to make a lot of impact in favor mm -hmm. of one of the political parties, maybe. Okay, okay. What do you think, Saurabh? Uh, talking specifically of daily elections, I think again that price rise is a major issue. Uh, in 98, BJP was voted out specifically because of this issue. So I think this time around also onions and tomatoes have rocketed. So this is going mm -hmm. to play a major role. And right. secondly, I think over the past five years, the corruption cases that have come across the means it has really shaken the belief of common man. So I think that is also going to play a major role in these elections. Yeah, and one of the political parties are basing the whole election campaign around corruption, the Aam yeah. Party. Uh, I just wanted something that uh, that's interesting me is that um, uh, you know the Aam Aadmi Party. We're talking about report cards and we're talking about past performances. But for a party like the Aam Aadmi Party, which is, you know, nothing to say of the past because it's it's they've been they've come into existence now, um, but yet there are a lot of hopes, you know, people uh, and be obviously because they've they've come up as a party that is going to eradicate, literally sweep out corruption, is going to work on women's security in the city. Uh, you know what what is the what is the janta uh, you know basing their hopes on as as far as uh, you know, the Aam Aadmi Party is concerned. Ankur. Yeah, see, I think, uh, you know, like I was uh, talking about earlier, Aam Aadmi Party has done a few things right, which really resonate with the citizens in India. And given the number of corruption scandals and cases that came up in last few years, this is, some, this is one thing which people right from the top to the bottom has been really frustrated about. So Aam Aadmi Party has been able to, you know, strike that right chord uh, by, uh, you know, uh, trying to be transparent, you know, transparent in various ways. So it seems to be striking the right chord with the people. But you know, um, I'm a firm believer in uh, really, uh, you know, understanding how it goes only when when it's being tested. Because you know, without without being in power, you can claim a lot of things. But unless unless you know, 
like 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 it's being said with great power comes great responsibility so unless you really are given that power that's when you will get to know how much of you how much of how much of amadvi part amadvi part really is corrupt and uh, whether they you know uh, do ensure to be non corrupt and transparent right i think it's a good note to wrap up this very interesting conversation remember you can watch this hangout on ibncj.com uh you can also watch a special report that we have uh, made on all the websites and all the people who are representing these websites it's on ibncj.com too um also we're starting an initiative on ibncj.com is called selfie so when you go out to vote on the 4th uh of december remember to click a picture of yourself showing that mark on the finger and we're going to put all of that up to celebrate democracy all of that is going to be on ibncj.com thanks so much for watching thanks everybody for joining us on the hangout and um everybody go through the website make an informed decision and go out and vote thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. thanks